to constrain righteousness. The laws were not made normally as a rule start out being made to hurt people. They bear not the sword in vain. They're made to constrain righteousness. But then they also are controlled by regulation. They'll say, you can't do this. We're regulating this because we cannot allow this to go on too much because of what we see down the road. Thou shalt not kill and strain righteousness. Honor thy father and thy mother. Control by regulation is put a order inside here. God did it that way. That's what laws and rules are for. Is to constrain righteousness and control by regulation. If a child did not honor their father and mother, then their father and mother could have them put to death. Now, I didn't say I'm for or against it. I am not for putting anybody to death for conversion, not killing. God would much rather you repent than you put to death. But the laws of men are set up for those two reasons, just like the law of God was. That's why they were set up, started out with. But the law was given, the traditions were given. And Paul said, For I was alive without the law once, but the commandment came and sin revived and I died. What did it do? It gave, the law gives revelation to our rebelliousness, our unrighteousness. God's law. Thou shalt not kill. And yet something inside of you starts saying, oh, I could kill him for that. Now I know none of you would ever have had that thought in your life when somebody does something superly wicked and you said, why don't they just kill him? They ought to put those kind of people to death. I've seen them. I've seen people who are anti-death penalty. When their family member gets brutally murdered, start questioning their own view on the death penalty. It makes statements that would almost sound like they're confident in their own view. If I was for it, that's one I'd have. How do they let them people? How do people become like that? They ought not. Why? The law is good if you use the law. And God used the law to show us our inability to do right inwardly, naturally. That's what the law was given for. They don't bear the sword in vain. But here's what happened. The law became, and tradition became detrimental with men. Because what happens? When I find out that I'm an enforcer of the law, and I've got people under me, I can use the law to manipulate them to do what I want them to do. And that's how these traditions came about. These traditions came about, oh, listen, all I got to do is make the statement that I made. A dogmatic statement. And now all of a sudden, the tradition of a man or the idea of this man becomes the doctrine of the church. It happens in societies, Christian, biblical, Whatever, all kinds of societies, all the time. It happened to the Pharisees, it happened to the Jews, it happened throughout religion, and it happens to world reigns. What happens? Well, 
give you an example. God teaches to love our neighbors. Does God teach us to love our neighbors? Yes. And shows us that throughout the scripture. I mean, he shows us, he shows us to love our neighbors, to love our siblings, to love our servants, to love strangers. I mean, to love the saints. God teaches us this thing throughout the scripture. And so, here's what he tells us to do. How difficult is that? And not to do, but to understand. That's what God teaches us. But, then, society started making rules that you can't speak against this group. You can't speak against this sin. You can't put up signs that say such and such. You can't do this. You can't do that. Because now they're saying, you're not loving them if you don't do it our way. And yet the Bible says to preach, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But if you preach repentance, you're not loving them like they say, like Christ loved. And I'm like, Christ is the one who taught me to preach, to preach repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. what he preached. And so here they are saying, you can't do that because that's not loving. You can't make a law, you can't make rules to keep them out of your group because that's not loving. You can't say, oh no, they can't work here, they can't do this, they can't do that. That's not loving. You're being hateful. And if you make those statements, that's going to be hate speech. So what do they do? Society makes those rules. In the United States of America, we might not have those as laws right now, but it's become traditions. Now, I'm not talking about any particular group. I'm saying that's reality. It's happening about everything. They get one law, and they say this is the plan for this law to promote righteousness and, and, and make regulations so that, we, uh, so that things don't go out of hand. And yet, then the next thing you know, they have to add on to that law and add on to that law and add on to that law. By, by new laws or new traditions on how these laws are to be taken into effect. That same side that tells us to be lovable hates you if you're not lovable. They want peace but refuse righteousness. And the work of righteousness is peace, the effect of righteousness is quietness. That's what society does. And that's what these Pharisees, they make one rule over here to explain what this rule, what, how to go about this thing. And they say, this is what we do. And uh, this is what our scripture are teaching us. They make new rules that, that, that come in conflict with the old laws and conflict. I mean, honor your parents with the first commandment with promise. And then we've got to keep your vows. And it's better not bow, bow, than bow, bow, not keep it. And here this one is, they've got a vow that they've made over here, and they've got parents that have a need over here. Now, what do you do? And they say, oh, we'll make a rule. We'll make a law. We'll figure this out. We'll make a new law, a new rule, a new tradition, a new way of doing this. And that's what they did, and that's what they still do today. And they miss the whole focus of what they did. So you got man with the natural condition of a bad heart. And then man got a normal tradition of new rules to control that, that bad heart. So what do we have? We got bad hearted men making rules for bad hearted men so that they can fix the problem of bad hearted men. And that's not going to happen. And that's what the Pharisees were doing. Instead of taking God's simple law and saying, okay, every situation is different. This is what God's law says. And God's desire is that we love, that we show grace and mercy. We know these truths. Even in judgment, shows mercy. 
we're going to make rules and regulations. So we've got man's natural condition, man's normal tradition. And in this case here, they're saying, if a man says, if a man makes a vow to the church, like a faith promise missions vow, but the Bible tells us, honor thy father and thy mother, that all he has to do is say, I can't take care of you, mom and dad, because of the fact that I've already promised this money somewhere else. What do you do? You made a vow, it's better never to vow, vow, and vow, vow, break it. Honor your father and your mother. You see, where man's natural condition and man's normal traditions run us into place, the reason that God is teaching us in this portion of Scripture is there needs to be a, uh, there is a needed transition from the law to Christ. From the law to Christ. Because the law always gets out of hand. Because somebody says, we want to do this to solve this problem. We want to make this new law to solve this problem. I see it in politics as I look at politicians day in and day out. They come up with, we will give money to this thing to solve this problem. I ask them, I say, so what happens when that something over happens over here? And you've already spent the money over here. Because you gave it over here. What happens? Well, we're going to go out and borrow more money. So we can give over here too. But what happens when you lose your credit rating? Sooner or later, I I'm telling you, it's the same thing. They make new rules upon their old rules. Because they're foolish. And I'm not saying that in a nasty, mean way. I'm saying we're foolish people. We keep on changing. We're fickle. If things change, we don't look and see the end from the beginning. We're blind. Leaders of the blind. Because they don't see a far off. Because they don't have the right, the needed transition. They have a natural condition. And therefore, normal traditions. But man has a needed tradition or transition. And three things, and I am done. They need to reevaluate, redirect, and refocus. You and I in our lives need to reevaluate, redirect, and refocus. So often we put ourselves under bondage to this or that. So often we we put ourselves in this situation here or that situation there. And now, instead of doing what we need to do, we go out there and make up a new rule on what to do. But what we need to do is these three things. We need to reevaluate. What exactly did God want in the first place? Why do we have the rules we have? Why do we have the rules we have? Why do we do what we do? You say, what are you talking about? Why did God want us to honor our father and mother? Why did God want us not to make a vow and then break a vow? Let's reevaluate. What is the desire of the rules you're making? Is it to make people do what you think they ought to do? Is it to fix a little problem over here that you see? Or is it that God may be glorified? <coughs> Less rules if your focus is God being glorified. Less regulation. If it's looking for God to be glorified, you don't have to fix every little problem. You say, can you glorify God by not taking care of your parents? Can you take glorify God by breaking your back? 
But what do I do? I've got a problem. Why did you make the vow? Why do you feel such a bondage to take care of your parents? Let's reevaluate the rules. Not only that, but what is the destiny of your rules? Not, not only is what's the desire that you have for your rules, but what's the destiny of If you follow them out to the end, where are your rules going to take you? Are they going to get you closer to Christ? Go far. Where are they going to get you? Are they going to make you look good but not be good? What are they going to do? Reevaluate. This is what he's trying to teach these Pharisees. Y'all are making rules and you got your rules are now in conflict with each other. And so you made another rule saying, wait a minute, because our rules are in conflict with each other, because they're both God's rules, now we've got a problem. We're going to make it. Well, we're going to override this rule by this rule. If you say it's Corbett, it's a gift that I'm giving to the Lord, then all of a sudden, I don't have to take care of my parents. You've got a law. You've got another law. You've got two laws. And they seem to be in conflict with each other. But you need to figure out what is your, what is your desire for these rules. Was God's desire for honor thy father and thy mother so that he could bring you in bondage to where you have to take care of mom and dad when they get old? Was it to make you to where you feel like I've got to do this, I've got to do this, I've got to do this? Was it better never to bow bow than to break bow and, and or to make bow and break it? Was that made so that he put you in bondage? So, oh my, I've got to make sure I pay this thing. What were the rules for? Did God make them for that or did God make them so that you have that you can glorify Him. What were the purpose of the world? What's the destiny of the world? I'll tell you, the first and great commandment is this, love the Lord of God, God of heart, God of soul, God of mind. Second is likewise, love thy neighbor as thyself. I mean, this is God says, all the commandments, all the law and the prophets wrapped up in that. What's the focus? Reevaluate. Reevaluate. Redirect. If you go to the extreme with your doctrine's commandments, where do you end up? I will tell you this. The Bible teaches that a person shows their thighs of their neck. And I'm not against. A girl where cut up here, cut all the way down to their ankles. I don't care if they cover their feet and their head. It doesn't bother me. But where's the end of your rules go to? Can I say you end up on a ditch on one side or the other side most of the time? When you start making more rules? You make them to where people are saying they're trying to figure out what exactly can I do and what can't I do? What about if I'm going here and I'm going there? What if I'm doing this or I'm doing that? Do I have to swim with long pants that are all the way down below to my ankle? And loose? Do I have to do this or I have to do that? Do I have to wear long sleeves all the time? So nobody can see my arm because if I if I raise my arm or I got short sleeves on, they might see my armpits or something. You know, I, I'm just thinking, I, I, I don't. I, I'm just I'm, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm telling you where does the end of it go? Redirect your boat. Redirect yourself. Where am I going to with this? Am I trying to get them to look to Jesus, or am I trying to get them to follow under my control? Reevaluate, redirect, and refocus. The only way you're going to keep out of the ditch is have the right focus. The problem is the heart. The problem is not the things. The things are symptoms of the problem. 
not keeping your vow, not taking care of your parents, has nothing to do with the issue. The issue is, where's your heart? This people draw nigh to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips. Their heart is far from me. If your heart gets right, then your hands will be right. If your heart gets right, your head will be right. What comes out of here, and what comes in here, and what comes in here. Your heart is right. They were about, they were trying to get the direction on the hands and the head and the feet and not on the heart. So if you reevaluate, redirect, and refocus. Does your tradition teach a principle? Or does it teach you to look away on the Jesus? Does it teach you to get your eyes on the Lord? Or does it teach you to leave something that's sinful? Or something that is not as good as another thing? If it does not get you to look unto Jesus, what ends up happening is somebody else comes along and says, but we can go farther. We can go farther. We can go farther. Well, let me say, you can't go farther than right up to his eyes, right in his heart, right in his bosom. You can't get farther closer to him. He's not a bitch. He's right smack dab in the middle, right between two crosses. Here he is hanging on the cross. Oh, right in the throne of God, right in the middle of everything. Here's Jesus Christ, and you can't get too close to him. But you start with the rules. They go farther and farther and farther. And sooner or later, they'll come into conflict with another one of your rules. Freedom of religion, free exercise of religion, and the rules that you cannot talk bad about certain lifestyle, certain people. All of a sudden, you've got a conflict. Say, one's the Constitution, the other one's not. One's tradition. The other one's strictly written down. But one is taught. You ought to love me. You ought to not be abrasive. You ought to not, you ought to be strong and firm, but not be mean and hard. Both of those things. One is the law, love your neighbor as you say it. One is the law on the uh, as far as the law the as far as the constitution goes, free exercise of religion. Free exercise of speech. The other, oh no, this is our country is a country that allows everybody. We're not. There's no establishment of religion. We do not say you cannot be something different. You can't live different. You see how they can come in conflict? And they are in our country. Same thing happened there. But if we get our eyes on them, looking under Jesus, You know, everything falls in place. Because then, you can say, I don't want anybody to die. I don't want to kill them. I want to reach them with the gospel. I don't want to beat them up. I want to reach them with the gospel. I don't want you to, I don't want to miss out on taking care of your parents. I've just got to come. I think I've got to give this money here. Now how am I going to do it? Dear God, what am I supposed to do? And you spend your time weeping before God, redirecting your focus onto Him, refocusing on Him and going to Him and saying, Dear God, I know You're a God of compassion. And God, I also know You're the God who answers prayer. I also know You're the God who can lead us in the path of righteousness for Your name's sake. I know You're God and beside me there is none else. And I count of conflict and I don't know what to do. You know what most people do? 
like it's about to have an answer. They say, I'll find that to make new answer, a new tradition, a new law, a new rule. And the truth of the matter is, I don't know. Which do you do? Do you break your vow and take care of your parents? Or do you take care of your parents? Or, be, or, or leave your parents out there and pay your back? Which do you do? You know what I say? Run to the Lord. Spend your time on with Christ. Get Him. And He might get, make it where you can do both. He might make it where you can give a little bit over here and say, I'll give longer, but I can't give as much and I can give to my parents. I can know somebody might come along and open and open up a door to where you can build a, another room on your house. Your parents can come and stay with you at the same time you're able to do this other. God is bigger. The law was a schoolmaster for what? To not fix our problem, but to bring us to Christ. And yet the Pharisees. Like most religion and regulation, they find all the answers. And they'll say, This book gives you all the principles of life. And I say, Yay and Amen. But this book is not about principles. Christ said, This book is about the Prince Himself, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And all we get is the laws and the rules and the how to, the what to, and the when to from this book. And Mr. Who to will end up dying in a ditch. And we'll end up with an unhealthy heart. And an unhappy heart. But God wants to have a healthy heart so we can have a happy heart. And a heart that's filled with Christ will be a happy heart. You know, keep us out of ditches. Because I don't have to have all the answers. I know the one who is the answer. Father, I pray that 